Lung carcinoma, now with neck pain. T1, kind of an ugly T2, axial T1. What do you think the most likely diagnosis is? Is it metastatic disease? Is it renal osteodystrophy? Is it Paget's? Is it a hemangioma? Or is it TB? And I'm devious enough that I could give you the same thing twice, you know. I'm not, don't put it past me. That's what I wanted you to say. It's the incorrect answer. But that's, um, I think that is the logical conclusion from looking at these images. Let's see if I can go forward. Uh, so here we have the body. The key here is certainly you have compression fracture, low signal, and you kind of jump on that, oh, I've got lesions. The, the key thing here is to say, well, gee, that at one point resembles a spinous process, but now it's like huge. And you come over here and that resembled a transverse process, but those are massive. And they're bright. Why are they bright? You know, so if metastatic disease is not going to expand the transverse process and posterior elements while maintaining a high signal on a T1 image. So given that, it's going to be pageants. Despite, you know, you got to think, look through the loss of height of the body. You may not be able to see the expansion in the body itself. You got to look elsewhere to see that expansion. You know, think about something that's still maintaining high signal on T1. And actually, in that patient, that was, I didn't make up the history, that was a lung cancer patient, so it can be very difficult trying to figure that out. So the differential is correct, metastatic. Other primary bone tumors, you kind of look at and dismiss because it's everything's being involved, vertebral body, posterior elements. I mean, angioma, I mean, you're just, you would think about it just because you're seeing high signal on T1, but otherwise, it's not really much coming into the differential. Pagets, we don't care, okay. Uh, we're bored now. T1 on something that's bright on a T1. The take home message here is how many things involve the body, can involve both anterior and posterior elements, and are still maintaining fairly good, you know, high signal on T1. Not many. So that's pagets. Here's three levels of pagets. You get coarsening of the trabeculae. So you, again, sort of have to look through this. I've lost vertical height, but still even kind of putting that together, this is an expanded body, even given the height loss. And then you have coarsening of the trabeculae. And then you have coarse intrabeculae up here. So here are things that are going to be bright. Uh, you know, on T1 images, you've got to run through the type 2 changes. Hemangioma, again, multi-level pagets, a very typical pattern. Again, burn that one in to the retina, uh, sort of this patchy high signal, coarsening of trabeculae, but the bodies are expanded. They may lose a little vertical height, but they're still expanded AP. And then radiation change. Here's another hemangioma. You can have both intra, you know, osseous and extra osseous components. I think this is a very difficult diagnosis to make. At this level, this looks like metastatic disease, but you put it together with a nice hemangioma adjacent to it. And then on the axial, you get a sense that you do have coarsening of the trabeculae within this mass. Uh, so a component of osseous hemangioma and extra osseous. So it's obviously the extra osseous is not going to maintain that high signal on T1 because that's just going to be you know, the fat associated with the body itself.